If there's one thing that I've learned, it's that if people are praising something on Twitter, then it probably sucks. Before I get started, I'd like to kindly ask that you hit the like button and please subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it! So Jungle Cruise is the latest attempt by Disney to turn a theme park attraction into a movie franchise, further showcasing how they have officially run out of ideas. I try to start every review off with something positive. And I did find one thing, and that one thing is Emily Blunt. She's a very likable person in almost everything that she's in. Now the character that's written for her in this movie doesn't do her any favors, but she does do the most with what little she has, and that has to count for something. You love me! You really love me! This leads me to her very large co-star, The Rock. <laughs> You know, I love The Rock and I always will, but he picks the strangest roles for himself. The Rock seems to always want to be one of these everyman characters. And every time I see him trying to do that, it's like, Rock, have you seen yourself? You are anything but an everyman. The Rock picks roles like he's Kurt Russell or Bruce Willis or something like that. It's all in the reflexes. When he should be picking roles as if he's Sylvester Stallone or Arnold Schwarzenegger. The closest thing that I've seen to The Rock that we should be getting in movies was actually probably Fast Five and Six. Luke Hobbs was a big, tough, intimidating character. Hey Jack, how you feeling today? You want answers? It doesn't matter how you feel! You snotty little bastard. And in Jungle Cruise, The Rock plays a broke, shady riverboat captain with a secret. If that doesn't get your blood boiling, then I don't know what will. This might be considered a little bit of a spoiler, so be warned, but The Rock does play a Spanish person in this movie. I thought for sure that's gotta offend someone in 2021, am I right? You about to cross some fucking lines. And the other character of note is Emily Blunt's character's brother, whose only real distinctive character trait is his sexual orientation, which actually has nothing to do with the movie. There's even this kind of weird scene where he comes out to rock and it's real awkward and not very well done. I guess this is Disney's idea of proper representation. I feel like they're trying to tell us something. Oh well. This movie desperately wants to be The Mummy or Pirates of the Caribbean, and it pretty much fails at both of them. In fact, at times, it blatantly steals from both of them, specifically pirates. The villains in this movie are basically Barbosa and his crew from Pirates, just with jungle gimmicks instead of ocean ones. There was a certain quality to adventure movies like The Mummy or Pirates or even Indiana Jones, which by the way, I saw someone trying to compare Jungle Cruise to earlier today, and those people need to have their head checked. <laughs> Son of a bitch. But all these movies I just mentioned had this swashbuckling element to them with a rugged male lead, but they also managed to take some over-the-top elements and ground them in some form of tension and reality. Jungle Cruise basically just takes a slapstick, over-the-top, no-stakes approach that we've become accustomed to with Disney movies. It makes the adventure feel that much more campy and goofy, and it makes it very hard for you to care about what's actually going on. I don't care! I can hear it now, but it's fun. It's supposed to be goofy. I just mentioned fun adventure movies that also manage to be good in the process. This movie overuses CGI, and to make it even worse, the CGI is not very well done. I'm not really sure why CGI seems to be heading in the wrong direction. I mean, Jurassic Park had better, more realistic creatures in it, and that was made in 1993. We're so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. I don't usually talk about run times, but this movie is about 2 hours and 7 minutes and it feels like it's about 4 hours. Like is there any reason that this movie couldn't have been a quick hour and a half and be done with it? That level of overindulgence with the runtime really brings out the movie's flaws. I think for the first time ever in my life I actually got up in the middle of the movie and started walking around up in the back of the theater. I'm not gonna lie, I actually checked out of this movie on more than one occasion, especially in the third act which is just pretty much a big CGI fest. I'm sorry, but this movie just is not good. I'm literally racking my brain trying to figure out how this movie is getting such a positive reaction. Have our standards fallen so low that people are just okay with a movie that offers nothing new or interesting? And blatantly tries to copy off much better movies and fails miserably? Disney is truly creatively bankrupt, and I'm sorry if you're tired of hearing me say that, but it's the truth. Because they prove it each and every time they release a new movie. Some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate uphill. 
I truly feel sorry for anyone who is suckered into paying an additional $30 if they have a Disney Plus subscription to watch this movie. But hey, at least Emily Blunt will be able to sue Disney now for taking money out of her pocket and putting it in theirs. Show me the money. <laughs> Jungle Cruise had the potential to be a nice throwback to the adventure movie of yesteryear, but instead it just comes off as nothing more than a cheap imitation. That's why I'm going to give it the disgusted Ian Malcolm. That is one big pile of shit. So if you've seen Jungle Cruise, I hope you haven't. If you have, let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below. As always, please like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell for notifications, and I'll see you next time right here on Real Shift. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Y'all be cool. Shut up.